Welcome to our Hong Kong Brief program. Today, we have some intriguing news stories lined up for you. First, a senior British judge has raised alarms about the rule of law in Hong Kong following the resignation of three overseas judges from the city's top court. This development has sparked intense debate about the political environment in Hong Kong and its judicial independence. Next, football fans are in for a treat as Atletico Madrid, the former Champions League finalists, are set to face Hong Kong's own Kit Chi in a much-anticipated match this summer. While the exact date is still to be confirmed, the excitement is already building up. Lastly, we celebrate a historic win as Taiwan's Nymphia Wind becomes the first drag queen from East Asia to clinch the title on the reality TV show RuPaul's Drag Race. Nymphia, also known as fashion designer Leo Sao, has captured hearts and made waves both at home and abroad. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage of these stories. Japan Times a senior British judge, Jonathan Sumption, has raised alarms about the rule of law in Hong Kong, describing it as being in grave danger due to the political climate influenced by China. This statement followed the resignation of Beverly McLaughlin from Hong Kong's Court of Final Appeal, who cited personal reasons for her departure. McLaughlin, aged 80, is the third overseas judge to leave the court in a week, joining Sumption, 75, and Lawrence Collins, 83, both former justices of the UK Supreme Court. This exodus highlights growing concerns over the judicial independence in the region, which has been under increased scrutiny since the implementation of the national security law by Beijing. South China Morning Post, Atletico Madrid is set to play a confirmed match in Hong Kong this summer, despite uncertainty surrounding their visit to mainland China. The Spanish football giants, who have reached the UEFA Champions League finals three times, are expected to bring star players like Antoine Griezmann, Rodrigo de Paul, and Angel Correa, led by their iconic manager Diego Simeone. The match is anticipated to be against Kit Chi, the recently dethroned Hong Kong champions. However, a proposed friendly tournament in mainland China involving Paris Saint-Germain and Inter Milan has faced financial difficulties, casting doubt on those fixtures. Atletico remains committed to their Hong Kong visit and may seek additional matches in Asia to complement their schedule. The last high-profile team to visit Hong Kong was Manchester City, who played Kit Chi in July 2019. South China Morning Post Clara Chan Ka Chai, known for her adept handling of Cathay Pacific Airways' 39 billion Hong Kong dollars bailout in 2020, has risen to the CEO position at the Hong Kong Investment Corporation, HKIC. Chan's negotiation skills during the pandemic, when Cathay was on the brink of collapse, earned her the nicknames Goddess and Little Chili due to the tough terms she secured for the rescue package. The bailout included a 11.7 billion Hong Kong dollars rights issue, a 7.8 billion Hong Kong dollars bridging loan, and 19.5 billion Hong Kong dollars in preference shares, with the government gaining 1.95 billion Hong Kong dollars in warrants. The deal was designed to balance the airline's funding needs with decent returns for taxpayers. Chan's experience with the Cathay bailout is now guiding her leadership at HKIC, where she aims to ensure that government investments yield returns while supporting startups financially. South China Morning Post Kongcha Y Toro, the renowned Chilean winemaker, has launched a new wine collection titled Jewels of the New World, which pairs its exquisite wines with gemstones that reflect their unique characteristics. This innovative concept was introduced in the Greater China region during a tasting event in Hong Kong, where professional tasters guided guests through the various offerings. The collection includes wines from Chile, Argentina, and the United States, each paired with a precious stone. For instance, the Emilia Chardonnay is paired with lapis lazuli, sourced from Chile's Lamari Valley. The collection showcases Kongcha Y Toro's diverse terroirs and the remarkable quality of wines from the New World, emphasizing the brand's heritage and its strong presence in the Asian market.
the pairing of wines with gemstones highlights the rarity and preciousness of these wines, making them a perfect match for the intricate flavors of Cantonese cuisine. South China Morning Post The rule of law and judicial independence are fundamental to Hong Kong's success, a principle upheld since before the 1997 handover. However, the recent resignation of British judges from Hong Kong's Court of Final Appeal has sparked debate about the necessity of foreign judges in the city's judiciary. Critics argue that the British government's pressure on its judges to resign is politically motivated and undermines the perception of Hong Kong's judicial independence. Despite the resignations, Hong Kong courts continue to reference common law precedents, including those from the UK, ensuring that the legal wisdom of British judges is not lost. Some believe that the presence of foreign judges is more about maintaining an image of international credibility rather than making a significant impact on judicial decisions. The Hong Kong judiciary has established itself as a respected institution, and the ongoing reliance on foreign judges may no longer be necessary to uphold its reputation. South China Morning Post In response to outgoing British judge Jonathan Sumption's claims that Hong Kong's rule of law is under threat, the Hong Kong government has issued a strong rebuttal. Sumption, in a Financial Times opinion piece, argued that the city's judiciary operates in a politically compromised environment imposed by China. The Hong Kong government refuted these claims, asserting that local courts are free from political pressure and that the rule of law remains robust. Chief Executive John Lee Kachiu emphasized that the government respects and safeguards judicial independence, ensuring no interference in prosecutions or trials. The government also highlighted the increase in startups, overseas businesses, and international conferences in Hong Kong as evidence of continued confidence in the city's legal system. Sumption's departure, along with other non permanent judges, has sparked concerns, but the government insists that the rule of law in Hong Kong is strong and will remain unchanged. South China Morning Post Amidst the glitz and glamour of season 16 of RuPaul's Drag Race, a beacon of vibrant yellow stood out. Nymphia Wind, the drag persona of 28-year-old fashion designer Leo Sao, was just about to experience her moment of triumph decades in the making. Donning a bright yellow bikini and miniskirt, she was about to become the first winner of RuPaul's Drag Race from East Asia in the show's 15-year history. Nymphia Wind has become synonymous with the color yellow, often referencing bananas in her outfits. Yellow represents the color of my skin, she said, aiming to raise awareness and appreciation of Asian culture. Sao, born in Los Angeles and raised in Hong Kong and Taiwan, was inspired by K-pop girl groups in high school and ventured into cross-dressing while studying fashion design in Rochester, UK. Sao's persona, Nymphia Wind, developed in Taipei, draws from a mix of Taiwanese opera, Japanese buto, and European Rococo-style makeup. Her performances, including a traditional Asian sleeve dance, have garnered strong support both locally and internationally. Crowds in Taipei gather in gay bars to watch her performances, wearing yellow to support the Banana Buddha. Her efforts to showcase Asian excellence have earned her praise and bookings in Japan and the Philippines. South China Morning Post Hong Kong residents made over a million trips across the border during the Dragon Boat Festival holiday, more than three times the number of visitors who traveled in the opposite direction, according to immigration department figures. This trend has sparked concerns among the retail industry about the declining impact of major holidays on business. From Friday to Sunday, January 3rd million trips were made out of the city, with 89% of residents heading to mainland China. In contrast, only 424,840 people arrived in Hong Kong, including 333,692 mainland arrivals. Jonathan Leung Chun from the Association of Restaurant Managers noted that peak seasons no longer guarantee increased sales and foot traffic. 
The trend of Hong Kongers flocking to neighboring cities like Shenzhen has hit the local economy, with more than 74 million trips made by residents through border checkpoints from May 2023 to April this year, compared to 28 million trips by mainland visitors to Hong Kong. Macau's investment in marketing and promotion to attract visitors has been noted as a competitive edge. The Hong Kong government has been providing assistance to SMEs and plans to host over 100 mega events in the second half of the year to boost tourism and local consumption. South China Morning Post Hong Kong's footballers have been contending with inadequate training facilities and stifling temperatures ahead of their FIFA World Cup qualifier in Turkmenistan. After a high-intensity contest with Iran, Wolfgang Lewis's squad undertook a 19-hour journey to reach the Central Asian country. The interim head coach has been using his sports psychology skills to maintain the squad's morale, incorporating fun elements into recovery sessions to keep spirits high. The team faced delays and poor training conditions upon arrival in Ashgabat, with temperatures soaring above 40 degrees. They will play on artificial turf at Ashgabat Stadium, which poses additional challenges. Despite these hardships, Lewiser remains optimistic, urging his players to bring their energy and intensity to the match. Hong Kong and Turkmenistan each have one point from five matches, and a win would mark Hong Kong's first World Cup away win since 2015. The team has a clean bill of health, and despite visa issues that initially prevented some staff from traveling, there is a good vibe in the squad. The players are focused on the match, staying in a comfortable hotel and avoiding sightseeing due to the extreme heat. South China Morning Post The Hong Kong Investment Corporation, HKIC, a government-owned entity managing 62 billion Hong Kong dollars, 8 billion US dollars, in funds, is poised to make its initial investments in startups this month. This move aims to bolster innovation and technology as key drivers of sustainable economic development in the city. Clara Chan Ka Chai, the CEO of HKIC, revealed that the investments will focus on hard and core technology, biotechnologies, and new energy and green technologies. A likely candidate for investment is Smart Moore, an AI unicorn, with a strategic partnership agreement set to be signed to foster industry growth in the Greater Bay Area. Established in October 2022, HKIC oversees four funds, including a 30 billion Hong Kong dollars co-investment fund designed to attract businesses to Hong Kong. The corporation also manages the Hong Kong Growth Portfolio and the Capital Investment Entrance Scheme, CIES, which fast-tracks residency for investors. Chan emphasized that HKIC will target companies capable of delivering substantial returns and leveraging capital to encourage technology firms to establish their base in Hong Kong. The HKIC plans to expand its staff to 50 as it ramps up its investment activities and partnerships. Nikkei Asia Angela Zhang's High Wire, How China Regulates Big Tech and Governs Its Economy demystifies the intricate and often opaque regulatory landscape governing China's tech giants like Alibaba and Tencent. Zhang, a legal scholar at the University of Hong Kong, employs a dynamic pyramid model to elucidate the hierarchical, volatile, and fragile nature of China's regulatory regime. Her book explores the delicate balancing acts faced by state leaders, bureaucrats, tech giants, and consumers in navigating growth, stability, innovation, security, profits, and privacy. Zhang also delves into the volatility of the regulatory approach, driven by multifaceted bureaucratic incentives and the lag between leadership decisions and grassroots implementation. The book highlights the structural fragility of the Chinese state's regulatory efforts, drawing parallels with other sectors like real estate and energy. Zhang provides a nuanced analysis of the Ant Financial IPO cancellation, attributing it to regulatory concerns over the firm's business model rather than simplistic ideological clashes. She also examines the interplay between various regulatory agencies and the potential for cooperation between China and the U.S. in AI governance, offering a comprehensive view of China's political economy. The Toronto Star 
Shake Shack is finally making its debut in Toronto, opening its first Canadian location at Young and Dundas. The popular burger joint, known for its smash burgers and crinkle fries, has taken two decades to expand north of the border due to logistical challenges in sourcing the right food and suppliers. The new 135-seat, two-floor restaurant will feature all the classic menu items, including the all-beef smash burger, fried portobello burger, fried chicken sandwich, Vienna beef hot dogs, and frozen custards. For the Canadian market, Shake Shack has collaborated with local suppliers like Pluck Tea and Broadflower to create unique offerings such as a butter tart frozen custard and a special milkshake with salted pretzels and maple syrup. The Toronto location will also serve local wines from Rosewood Wines and an exclusive beer from Bellwoods Brewery. Culinary director Jim Frisch emphasized the importance of replicating the U.S. menu while incorporating high-quality Canadian ingredients. Shake Shack's journey from a hot dog cart in New York City's Madison Square Park to a global chain with over 300 locations in the U.S. and 175 internationally highlights its unique appeal and commitment to quality. The Toronto opening marks the 20th country for Shake Shack, with plans to open 35 more locations in Canada over the next decade. South China Morning Post Two years after an extended lockdown under China's dynamic zero-COVID policy led to an exodus of expatriates, Shanghai is finally seeing a resurgence of overseas visitors. The city is bustling with tourists from various countries, thanks to the relaxation of visa policies aimed at boosting tourism amid an economic downturn. Despite this influx, fewer foreigners are choosing to stay long-term due to a sense of insecurity and limited opportunities. Shanghai, known for its historical openness since the 19th century, is making efforts to restore its international appeal. Measures such as visa-free stays for travelers from several countries and policies allowing tour groups to enter without visas have been introduced. Tourist attractions like Yuyuan Garden and Zujiajio Ancient Town are witnessing a surge in foreign visitors. However, the long-term expatriate community is still hesitant to return, with many citing economic uncertainties and shifting policies as deterrents. The city is also working to make services more foreigner-friendly, such as accepting foreign credit cards and taxis and facilitating easier payments through mobile apps. South China Morning Post Hong Kong's retail industry is facing significant challenges despite the reopening of China's economy. As Hong Kongers flock to the mainland for shopping, the city's retail sector struggles with high shop rents and a strong Hong Kong dollar, making it less competitive. Data shows that outbound trips by Hong Kong residents to the mainland have surged, while mainland visitor arrivals have not fully recovered to pre-pandemic levels. This trend, driven by unfavorable exchange rates and cheaper prices across the border, has led to a decline in retail sales in Hong Kong. Even public holidays, which typically boost retail activity, have become a source of anxiety for local retailers as more residents choose to travel instead. The retail landscape in mainland China has also evolved, offering sophisticated shopping experiences that attract Hong Kong consumers. However, there are some positive signs, such as falling vacancy rates in key shopping districts and government efforts to boost tourism. In the long term, the integration of the Greater Bay Area may benefit Hong Kong by attracting more mainland Chinese brands and enhancing its role in regional consumer demand. The Globe and Mail, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh has pledged to expel any MP from his caucus who knowingly collaborated with a foreign government to undermine Canada. This commitment follows a national security watchdog report revealing that some parliamentarians have been working with foreign entities for personal gain. Singh emphasized the importance of vetting candidates and urged other party leaders to take similar actions. Public Safety Minister Dominic LeBlanc announced that the government would support a motion to include the report's findings in the ongoing foreign interference inquiry. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Christia Freeland challenged the Conservatives to take a stand on capital gains changes, and Quebec Premier François Legault secured $750 million from Ottawa to support the surge in temporary immigrants. 
Other political developments include former Supreme Court Chief Justice Beverly McLaughlin's decision to retire from Hong Kong's highest appellate court and the nomination of former Global BC newscaster Randy Neal for the BC NDP. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.